Okay, so I'm wearing glasses. How cool am I? I'm doing a Casey Nest, Casey Newat, Casey Nestat, whatever his name. I remember watching a video that he did a video wearing glasses and he explains to people why. It's because he's got a script in front of him and he wants to read a script but he wants to pretend he's looking at you so that's what I'm doing right now because I've got a script in front of me. <laughs> it's not really a script, it's just a few bullet points that I wanted to talk about. Anyway, basically this is a, another video on my freaking phone case that I've designed. Now it's so over the top, like the amount of time I put into this phone case is kind of sad. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm using this phone case, I'm using this phone every single day so I want it working just the way I want. So what have we done? We have quite a few differences now. So this is phone case version 3. And so we have the changes from the first. And so let's talk about the changes from the first video I did on this. So now we only have six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six notches. Before it was uneven, it had one here, one here, and the other one remained where it was. And the reason for that is so that I have the bottom it can now stand on flat surfaces, like on my table, like that, just on its side. It can stand one way and the other way. And it also looks much more symmetrical in design from the back and the front. The buttons are printed separately, so you can see they are a different color. They are clear in this. And these buttons, when printing separately, they are printed flat. So before, it was printed as one piece on the bottom and went up. However, there was just only like one line protruding for each button like that 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 when it would print it and that it would easily snap however now i print these buttons flat individually and then i super glue them in place on the front piece so in a way there's a bit of extra work that you have to put in super glue on the bottom of them and then push them in place but it's really worth it now because they are flexible and there's, there's no way they're breaking because i've been using this version of the phone case for months now and the buttons haven't failed me at all also since the buttons are printed separately they have a different color so that looks really nice as well the design is much more stronger now because we have the corners right angled they are square now they're 90 degrees they're not rounded off anymore in version one they were rounded off so I'm not talking about the front and back I'm not talking about these i'm talking what goes between them this area here although it doesn't sound like a big deal it actually wasn't joining when it was printing rounded corners since the design was like that, the lines would print almost like that, so it would skip the corners and it wouldn't attach. However, now that I've made them square, they are touching each other, so it's printing one single line. Stupid Me has dropped this phone quite a lot, the phone in the phone case. Now, although the phone case broke a few times, the phone is still in immaculate condition, which is doing its job, basically. However, uh, doing the corners like that is going to increase the strength. Also the front piece where the type c connector cable goes this area was really really thin but now i made it slightly thicker so that increases the strength as well a huge change in the design is these 430 grade stainless steel circles now they are there for a reason and that is mostly because of the s pen gps and the nfc features so say we want to write on the screen let's get the s pen out and press screen write and you can see by default without any magnets it writes perfect but if we go back and we place a magnet behind it so let's get the magnet that i used so this is the magnet i've been using the most which is 30 by three millimeters thick so we've got the magnet here and if we attempt to write look what happens so at the top is fine but when you go down where the magnetic field is it doesn't write at all so let's go out of this put the final close and take this away and let's try the smaller one so this is 25 by 2 millimeters thick and this is N52 power and let's try that so let's try screen right again screen right so although this is smaller there's still a lot of interference you see the field is a bit smaller but still can't write there now if we put in those steel rings so i ended up using a 50 by two millimeters so this is actually a super glue together so they stay in place so 50 me so 50 millimeters so 50 by two in total each ring is around one millimeter and then i have these 30 by one millimeter 
and these are super glued together so that's two millimeters so that's four in total so I have around six millimeters worth so it's like that so we have around six millimeters worth of stainless steel with the magnet behind open the phone up just making sure that the magnet is in place go on to screen right and then attempt to write and it writes everywhere so as you can see that worked and the magnet will still do its job as in connecting to my mount i.e. this it will still lock in place with the magnet being there which way is it? like that and then we have those rings circles and then that it is really over the top I know and that will repel the magnetic field remove the mount open it up open up the screen right And as you can see, no problem. However, if we connect this to the mount, the magnetism does increase again. So if we try to screen right, you see, it's starting to fear again because the magnetism is increased greatly because there's another magnet obviously behind so we have uh, this is the 30 millimeter by 5 millimeter thick magnet here and then the 25 by 2 millimeters thick so that is still an issue that I'm still having because you're obviously increasing the magnetic field quite a lot but still when you're using it without the mounts it still resolves one of the issues that I've been having so a bit of background on how I came up with this method. I researched into different methods on how to repel this magnetic field and turns out it's steel. And I needed to be stainless steel because I sometimes like to put my phone underwater and obviously I can't have the metal rusting. So stainless steel is the right way to go. This steel needs to be ferromagnetic as it needs to attach to the steel. So 304 stainless steel wouldn't work because it doesn't attach to magnets due to the low iron contents in the steel. So instead I ended up having to use 430 grade stainless steel which is ferromagnetic. As you can see it attaches. Actually all these steel rings that you see I ended up making them manually from some strips of metal that I have and I've recently bought a new Makita grinder so I was testing it out. So I just cut it into squares and I drew out the circle with a marker pen and I just grinded them into a circle also I had to use separate sizes so you can see here we have the 50 millimeter one and here we have 30 millimeter ones and the magnet itself is 25 millimeters now that is because I can't have these 50 millimeter ones going here because it would interfere with the mount system and the ring so I had to use a smaller one, but still the thickness of it does repel the magnetism. And lastly, where I had the plastic piece go, I now ended up using 430 grey stainless steel. And it's just mostly for the aesthetic purposes because it looks really nice. So we have a bit of metal going everywhere and you do look really cool actually. Now to accommodate for the placement of these circles, I had to change the middle layer. So here you can see we use bridging. So three layers of 0.2 millimeters totaling at around 0.6 in bridging area. This is just to make sure that the credit card and debit card that I hold doesn't touch the circles. So they would be here and the credit card would slot in underneath. So that these steel circles don't get in the way of the credit card as you push it in and that just so it slides in easily. Now, this has a long, very straight line all across this edge at the top and at the bottom. And this, you can see, has a slot for it. Very, very nice slot. So that they align perfectly and they go in together. One more thing, I also added a little bevel 
where the credit card slots in, like here, it is now more sloped so that the credit card slots in easily. So as you can see, we've got the new buttons, which are much more flexible because they are printed flat now, separately and super glued in place. So you would put this phone in here and the plastic cover, which fits very nicely here. So we've got the back here and I want to check the magnetism. Which way does it connect? It connects like this to the mount. So the magnet will go in first and get this two millimeter. 2 millimeter thick by 30 millimeter wide and another one and another one which totals 4 millimeters in total so 25 wide 2 millimeters thick and 52 magnet followed by four layers of 30 millimeters by 1 millimeter 430 stainless steel circles and 250 millimeters wide by 1 millimeter thick 430 stainless steel circles goes here and lastly for my aesthetic touch here so yes, as I mentioned, really over the top, but hey, I'm crazy, I'm weird, whatever. I use my phone every day, so I want it to look good. So here we go, they align like that. So this will be the final look. The key ring can go in after. And you see, they go in perfectly. Now this helps the front and the middle from moving against one another. So they are nicely aligned and won't move at all. And as you can see, those stainless steel circles look amazing as well. So hell, although it's overcomplicated, it's worth it in my opinion. I mean, it's a one-time thing that I designed these. Oh, another huge thing that I forgot to mention. So where you have these holes at the front, middle, back, one, two, three, one, two, three, so six and four here they no longer need sacrificial layers i made them so that they slope up as they print so now there is like zero processing time once these are printed so you don't have to use scissors or screwdriver to get the sacrificial layer out there's no more need for that so it's much better printing like this because as, as you can see i'm just putting the screw in and i can just start screwing so much more straightforward now and yeah that is a huge thing because when i was actually doing it before i cut it out and i seemed to felt that there was still some plastic left inside which made it really difficult and it just wasted like up to around half an hour an hour or so although that doesn't seem like much it's still just a waste of time in my opinion but yeah i, d I did spend a lot of time designing something that is so I don't know does it seem useless like I mean I use my phone every day and I know people some people just like to change phones every now and then but I'm planning to just keep this phone for many years and uh, I don't want to change it so I thought you know what let's just invest some time into making the phone case that I want that I use and I find um, that just works and does what I needed to So see what I mean? These go right through. It's just so much easier to post process. Well, there is no post processing really. All you have to do is really just remove the print. And as long as you have your printer tuned fine, uh, there should be minimal cleanup. Maybe a little bit of uh, stringing that you need to clean up with a lighter. But other than that, no cutting of the sacrificial layers. Huge bonus to me. And I don't over tighten these because there's no need. And as I mentioned, I don't over tighten these bolts because if you do, it's gonna create a little bridge like that. You don't want that. So you just want the right balance and you can find that balance to see if the credit card goes in nicely. So here's my credit card. And if I try to put it in, 
and then I want to see how easy it is to remove it because remember I have this phone on my bike lock so say imagine this is my bike will this come out while cycling no the friction feels pretty good so yeah this feels great now the magnet works very well and let's try the S Pen let's go to screen right and it works perfectly everywhere so yeah that is mission completed very happy with the changes and as you can see we've got six symmetrical notches and the phone can stand sideways now whichever way you want it you can't stand upside down but for portrait filming it's perfect like that now and it looks beautiful as well perfect so yeah guys thanks for watching this video and me being ridiculously overly complicated and like go over the top and being oh just like so over the top of this <laughs> uh, i don't care it's a really nice phone case and i'm done with it now so hopefully i can leave it for another few months until i see another problem or something else that i want to add but yeah i'm really happy with this and the s pen and the fully functional design the, the fingering because i like to really finger my ring you know <laughs> But yeah, I'm really happy with this now, so yeah, I've done what I needed to do, it works perfectly, and I'm very happy guys. I know this may be over the top for a lot of people, and you might be interested, but I want to talk about it because I'm quite proud, uh, and this just, I don't want to go to waste, so I thought I'd film it after assembling it with, with this new version 3 design. Uh, if you want the files guys, they're up on my Etsy, and it's really cheap, it's only like £4, so you can print your own if you've got an S23 Ultra. Thanks for watching guys, till the next video, peace.